All right, take a look at the next section, basic factoring. Now, indeed, this is a review. You should know something about the basic factoring from the previous course. If the question asking you to factor AX plus 5X, now it's absolutely important that we understand what are we supposed to do. What are what is this question talking about? Factor. Hey, wait a minute. How many terms do we have here? AX plus 5X. How many terms? We have two terms. Terms are separated by a plus or minus. We have two terms over here. The question is asking us to factor. That means the question wants us to make this becomes a product. Something times something. One factor times another factor. And that is what we are supposed to do. Now, so understand the question is absolutely important. So when we try to make these two terms becomes one single term, a factor times another factor. So we need to identify in these two terms, do they have any common factor? X is the common factor. So I am going to factor out the X. Once I factor out the X, what would be the leftover? The leftover will be the original terms divided by the common factor plus the original terms divided by the common factor. This is indeed the reverse of the distributive property. Now we can double check that. Let's distribute the x back into the parentheses. What happened? I have x times the first fraction, so the x cancel out. I have the ax back plus x times the second fraction. x and the x cancel out, so I have the 5x back. So now, let's simplify that. So that would become x times a plus 5. Hmm. Take a look at the next one. I have two terms here. I want to factor out these two terms. Any common factor for these two terms? X squared, that's the GCF. Wonderful. So I'm going to factor out the X squared. And then times, what is the leftover? It would be X cubed over X squared plus 7X squared over the X squared. Now the left over will always be the original terms divided by the GCF. So simplify that a little. That will give us X squared times open parenthesis X plus seven. So far so good. Let's take a look at another one. Again, I have two terms. Do we have any common factors? No. Take a look at the, uh, you know, one by one, maybe. The number first, six and nine. What do they have in common? Three. And then we have an X cubed and X. What do they have in common? X. And then we have the Y square and Y. What do they have in common? Y. So the 3XY will be the GCF. And I'm going to factor out the 3XY. So what would be the leftover? The leftover will be the original terms divided by the GCF plus the original terms divided by the GCF. So what would that become? 
3 x y times open parenthesis let's take a look at the first term what would be the left over 2 x square y very good 2 x square y okay we do it step by step 6 divided by 3 2 x cubed divided by x x square y square divided by y y plus plus what plus 3 9 divided by 3 is 3 x divided by x is what what is x divided by x is 1 y divided by y is 1 but do I need to put down 3 1 1 no we are not getting information right it's 3 times 1 times 1 is it necessary for write down the 3 times 1 times 1 no because 1 times anything is equal to anything itself so this time we will just simply put down 3 right that's just the x and the y really cancel out. Now, but be very careful. Use the proper terminology. It will help us to avoid some careless mistake. When we factor out the GCF, we should say factor. A lot of times, people say, take out, put this away, right? We love take out, yeah. But if you say take out too often, that is an ambiguous terminology. Sometimes subtraction, you could say take out too. So if you keep saying that, some student will say, oh, you know, the, the second one, okay, I take out the x square. So 7x square, I take out one of them. So what do I have left? 6x square. And that is a common careless mistake. Now, so help yourself to remember whenever we factor out the GCF, the leftover will be the original terms divided by the GCF. It's the original term divided by the GCF. That is how we factor out the GCF. So you won't think about, oh, 9xy, I, I, I take out uh, uh, three of them, so I have 6xy left. Be very careful. All right? Same thing when we say x cancel out the x. Cancel is also an ambiguous terminology. Sometime when we cancel out something, right, x minus x, we also say cancel out. And then people will say, oh, that will become zero. So we have three times zero, we got nothing left. Zero. That is another common mistake. X divided by x, we reduce. So that gives us one. Let's see the next one. How many terms do we have? In the previous one, which part you don't understand? The second term? Okay, this is actually the development from the first two. We factor out the GCF. You understand how to get the GCF? If not, mark it down in your notes. You know, you need to work on that to figure that out what is a GCF. And once we factor out the GCF, the leftover would be the original terms. This is the original terms divided by the GCF plus the original term divided by the GCF. So if you double check that with the distributive property, we distribute this back into the parentheses, you see these two cancel out. So get back to the original one. Afterward, you have the 3xy multiply the leftover. So you have this divided by that. That would give you 2x squared y. And then 9xy divided by 3xy and the xy will be reduced so we got 1 and then 9 divided by 3 is 3. Take a look at the next one. How many terms do we have? We have 3 <laughs> terms separated by the plus or minus. So this time we need to look for 
the GCF for all these three terms. So take a look at the number first, 15, 9, and 12. What do they have in common? They have three in common. So let me put down the three. And then how about the variable x? I have x cubed, I have x to the fourth, I have x squared. So what do they have in common? x squared. Very good. Okay. And then variable y. y to the sixth, y to the fourth, y to the fifth, y to the fourth, y to the fourth. We're looking for the smaller exponent. So <coughs> the leftover would be 15 x cubed y to the 6 divided by 3x squared y to the 4 minus the original terms divided by the GCF plus the original terms divided by the GCF. So now, what would that become? We will have 3x squared y to the fourth multiply. In the very first term, what would be the leftover? 15 divided by bar, uh, 3 would be 5. And then x cubed divided by x squared, it would be x. Good. And then y to the 6th divided by y to the 4th, y to the 2nd. Very good. And then minus 9 divided by 3, 3. And then x to the 4th divided by x squared. It would be x squared. y to the 4th divided by y to the 4th. What would that be? What is y to the 4th divided by y to the 4th? It would be 1. Do I need to put down that 1? No, I don't need to. Plus 12 divided by 3, which is what? 4. And then x squared divided by x squared? It would be 1. But do I need to put down that 1? No. y to the 5th. Divided by y to the 4, it would be y. And then we close the parenthesis. All right? So far so good? Okay. Let's see another one. How about this one? It looks simple, right? Factor 6x squared plus 3x. We have two terms. What is the common factor? 3x. Good. So I'm going to factor out 3x. And what would be the leftover? 6x squared divided by 3x plus the original terms divided by 3x. So that would give you 3x multiply, open parenthesis. What would be the 6x squared divided by 3x? 2? 2x. Okay, we have 2x plus... 3x divided by 3x would be 1. Do I need to put down that 1? Yes, this time. This time we need to put down the 1. Now, so be very careful. Sometimes we put down the 1. Sometimes we don't. Like in the previous problem, we got 3 times 1 times 1. Whenever you have some other things, you can just ignore the one because one times anything is equal to anything itself. 
But if you don't have anything else left, you have 3x over 3x, then you would have to put down the 1. So be careful because the leftover is the original terms divided by the GCF. Be very careful if you still like to use take out. I strongly recommend don't say that. Fact out the 3x. Don't say take out. Otherwise, sometimes students will say, oh, 3x, take out 3x. So I got nothing left. I have zero. Or when you say 3x divided by 3x, oh, they cancel out. So I have nothing left. I got zero. That is a common palace mistake. How about factor negative 4x plus 12? If I take a look at the number 4 and 12, what do we have in common? 3? 4 would be in common. So supposedly, yes, 4. However, this time, we will factor out not just the 4, but negative 4. Why? Because inside the parentheses, we like to have a positive terms go first. So let's see what happened to the leftover. I have the original terms divided by the GCF, which is negative 4, plus the original terms 12 divided by the GCF. So that would give me negative 4 times open parenthesis x plus negative 3. That really means minus 3. Let's see another one. I want to factor out the negative 5x square, I'm sorry, 5y square plus 40x. Take a look at the number 5 and 40. What do we have in common? 5. For the variable, mm, no good. x, only second term has x. y, only second term, uh, only first term has y. However, we begin with the negative 5. So this time, Again, we want to factor out the negative 5. So what would be the leftover? It would be the original terms divided by the GCF plus 40x over the negative 5. So it would give you negative 5 times open parenthesis y square minus 8x yes well if you factor the 5 then inside the parenthesis you will begins with the negative so that doesn't look very nice. Although you can still manipulate that, you can turn the flip the first term and the second term in that case, then turn out you will have 80x minus y squared. You can do that too, right? Let's see one more. I want to factor the negative 8x squared minus 12x. So this time, 8 and 12, what do they have in common? 4. x squared and x, what do they have in common? x. That begins with a negative, so I should factor out negative 4x squared. Now, indeed, in this case, there's no way that you can avoid to make the uh, whatever inside the parenthesis begins with the positive if you don't factor out the negative. So let's see what happened. The leftover, it would be the negative ax squared divided by the negative 4x minus 
12x divided by negative 4x. Close the parenthesis. Then we will have negative 4x times open parenthesis. For the first term, what do we have left? Negative divided by negative, positive. 8 divided by 4, 2. x squared divided by x, x. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. x divided by x is what? x divided by x is 1. But do I need to put down that 1? No, we don't, because we got a negative 3 there. So we got minus a negative 3. So what's that mean? Plus 3. Sorry? We have a minus here, right? So we have a minus, and then the original terms divided by the GCF. All right, everybody happy? Okay. <coughs> now, some of you probably would ask, do I have to do all this kind of thing? I'm really cool, I know the answer, you know, can I just close my eyes, you know, trust my feeling, and then I know the answer is uh, uh, negative 4x uh, times uh, parenthesis 2x plus 3. Can I do it like that? Well, this is the review of the basic factoring. Indeed, you should be able to handle, or at least one day in the future, you should be able to tell what would be the answer. However, somewhere in your notes, you should write it out as clear as possible. So when you go back to your notes, your review sheet, and take a look at how do I get to the final answer, then you remind yourself, Hey, each time when I factor out the common factor, the left over would be the original terms divided by the GCF. Okay? Now, the sad part is sometimes people feel like too confident. Oh, I'm cool. You know, I can jump all the way to the answer and you mess it up. You got the wrong answer. And then you force people to give you no credit because you don't even know how you get to that point. Right? So, at some point, try to help yourself to slow down a little bit and show your work as much as possible. This is the time for you to have fun. Let's try out this five 